don't get to write a postie all the way around Australia and not encounter a few issues. And um, boy, did I encounter a few issues. So what I've done is I've, I've put together a video which is just a collage of all the challenges and issues that I faced along the way and, um, and how they were dealt with. So have a, have a look at this and uh, uh, yeah, enjoy what you see at, at my expense. The screw on the bowl of this carby has come worked its way loose and uh, my carby is just leaking fuel quite profusely at this stage and I'm not going to carry on until I've got that sorted out. So um, I've booked into a motel here in Kinnabarabran <clears throat> and I'm going to just do some running repairs on this, see if I can just one take the carby off tighten everything up and that'll sort this issue out for me so so I've lost the screw on this side on the left side of the bowl and that could be a major issue for me because these screws have very very specific threads and um, and uh, I'll take the carby off but I might have to get Cole to courier the spare carby to me all right, well, I seem to have cracked this problem. Um, I have repurposed a, a screw with the right diameter and thread. Very lucky. And you can see I've bodged it a bit. It's a bit long because it comes from, it comes from this um, air filter uh, breather hose that, um, that fits on to this box here. And it's a real tight fit and I really don't think it needs um, that screw, screwing it down that tightly on there. So um, I've tightened up the, the screw on the other side, tightened that one. I don't have any Loctite unfortunately, but um, I think that's going to do it. Uh, I had Col on standby to... to, to um, courier my other carby to me here at the motel but I think I've gotten away with this one so yep there we go um, so all I've got to do is put this all back together and make sure it fires up okay there you go purring like a kitten um, so definitely solved that problem that, uh, that little shiny screw in there um, behind that pipe anyway yeah problem solved idling away I love these uh, these fog lights on the front they really do a job. Probably not that noticeable on the camera, but uh, I'll tell you what, this bike is noticeable with them. Oh, this is idling so nicely now. Um, that should have given me a good hint, the fact that I couldn't get it to idle properly. And I thought it was just the fuel filters that I had installed, but clearly not. So there you go. I can't believe I did this. Um, I've snapped the um, the dipstick. It's a plastic dipstick, and um, it's snapped and it's dropped into the crankcase. And um, well, I'll see if if I can get something in there and if I can find it to fish it out. But I doubt it. In which case I'm going to have to take the whole, drain the oil, take the side cover off here, 
try not to damage the um, the gasket and uh, get it out and uh, refill this engine with oil. The uh, proprietors of the motel have been very kind and uh, have manufactured an oil tray for me, drain the oil into, which is fantastic. And uh, so I'm going to get to this before the sun really starts beating down on me. All right, well, I've managed to get the side cover off uh, of the crankcase. I've drained the oil out and um, retrieved the broken pieces of the um, of the dipstick. Um, thank God. Um, good news as well is the um, the gasket is in good shape, so I think that can go straight back on. No issue there. Um, there's a little there's a little tear in the gasket there, but I think um, that's going to not be an issue that's it's not actually doing anything that part of the gasket um, so um, as long as I can get this together nice and easily um, there's a couple of loose pieces that I just need to watch out for when I reassemble this um, hopefully I'll be back on the road pretty soon I had to take my foot pegs off just to get at a couple of the bolts so um, yeah, a little bigger job than I expected. And now I'm in the full sun, so I'm going to start sweating like a pig. But let me get on to this then. Okay, so there's some of the pieces. I've, I've dropped one somewhere, but not inside the crankcase. So those are some of the pieces of my recovered um, dipstick. Obviously, this part I'm still going to utilize just to um, keep... Uh, a lid on it. Um, but, uh, so yeah, now it's just a matter of uh, topping the oil up, filling the oil up. I've just got a, I think it's uh, 350 mils that goes in. And uh, top the oil up and uh, yeah, it's all back together again uh, pretty firmly. Put the foot pegs back on. Thank God for this bedroll of mine. I'll tell you it's been a lifesaver when it comes to um, sitting on, kneeling on the hard ground, working on the ground, etc. It just makes life a lot easier. So it's a keeper, I'll tell you that much. Um. Yesterday was uh, a day to remember, all right. I thought I'd ride as far as Townsville and um, and, uh, and then do the last leg from there to Trinity Beach today. Um, however, when I got to Townsville, it was kind of, it was raining and I didn't spot sort of, there's, there's just a motorway that goes through. And um, so I, uh, I pressed on and boy, I rode into some rain and um, I'll put some video up just a little bit that I took on my phone with that of that rain. Jesus. So uh, the consequence of that is I think my ignition got wet. The bike sort of stopped on me just a little ways down that road there and um, about four k's. I managed to restart it and it's coughed and sputtered its way to this little spot and this is the um, the Rolling Stone Hotel, um, just to the north of uh, Townsville, and um, yeah, look, it's uh, it's a pub on the side of the road, and I got a room here last night um, for sixty-five dollars, and you get what you pay for. But what they did do very nicely is they allowed me to park my bike up here on the under the covers. On the on the landing, it's just in the dark over there. Um, for it to dry out a bit, which um, it seems to have done, and um, but I uh, started it this morning. It seems to run all right. I've sprayed everywhere with WD-40 um, that I possibly can. Last night and again today, the 
in the ignition switch um, this plugs under the the wiring under the tank etc etc so I hope I'm going to have a clear run today so I've got about 360 kilometers to Trinity Beach um, so and um, I'm doing a lot of defensive WD-40 spraying on my electrics every time I stop just to make sure I don't have the same issues as I experienced yesterday and uh, so far the bike's holding up pretty well and uh, yeah um, so probably a hundred kilometers to go well I'm just spotted this which is my right hand rear indicator completely been melted by just the heat coming out of that exhaust um, all the time and I can now I can smell the plastic um, but uh, yeah that's unexpected that's for sure so I'll have to order another one from Lambda and see if I can get it to Darwin uh, and I can replace it there well I've discovered and I should have spotted this yesterday of course I should have why this um, exhaust has burnt through my uh, indicator and that's because it had dropped um, because this this bolt had um, had loosened and I'd lost that bolt hanging the exhaust there and um, <coughs> Obviously then the whole exhaust dropped a bit and that was it and when I started it this morning I heard some rattling from the exhaust and um, It seemed firm at the at the header. Well, it is firm at the header. I've just tight retightened those bolts. They were tight um, But that's the reason what the, that the exhaust dropped and then burnt the Burnt the indicator so that shouldn't happen again, all things being equal. Alright, so I've removed my um, my burnt out indicator and um, I'm going to replace it with this nice brand new one and uh, check all the tightness of my bolts again um, today is Wednesday the 1st of June tomorrow I get back on the road again from um, from Darwin uh, heading back toward Pine Creek where I'll stay to, um, on Thursday night and um, I'll have a fully functional uh, well my, my indicators were functioning they were just uh, it was just burnt that's all but now I'll have a brand new indicator to to blink on the on the right hand side which is probably all right well there you have it it's all working again and uh, looks good there um, so it's not a truck reversing that's my indicator buzzer going But um, and I say that because the bike is handling quite strangely right now. It it's kind of it feels as if it's got a flat tire. Now I know I've had this problem before with the rear uh, chain adjusters, um, where I'd broken one of those and. But this is happening in a different, slightly different way, and um, and it feels, like I say, it feels like I might have a flat, which I don't, and it feels like I'm getting into um, some tire grooves in the road. Now that happens um, with you know heavy vehicles, these road trains traversing these roads you know and um, 
they create these depressions, these real depressions in the bitumen, which aren't obvious from motor cars or other bikes even sometimes. But on this thing, um, it gets into them and um, and it really gets squidgy. It's uh, it's not a nice feeling. Um, so, so up front here, there's a bit of a turn off. I'm just going to pull over um, and just check that out. Once I get up to speed like this, it kind of feels a little bit better. But um, I'm going to do this anyway. Well, that back tire is a bit flat. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. My back tire is flat. Okay, let's see if I can get some air in that. I've got, I've got the little slime compressor, so that's fine, and um, you know, be able to get some air in it. But still, I just had the bloody tire changed, haven't I? And um, you know, you got to say to yourself, why, why would a brand new bloody tire, unless you know, I've ridden over something, I'll have to check that. But. Um, yeah, why would a brand new bloody tyre go flat on me? Now, I've got to get that plug out without burning myself. The joys of motorcycles, thank God, it's, um, it's not the kind of heat that I was experiencing yesterday. Because that was serious and... To, uh, to deal with that, there would be no joke. I'm just hoping that um, it's not something catastrophic with a tube that I can at least just do the 40 Ks into Kananara. We have to wait and see. Recording. Well, I put um, some air in the tyre and of course the bike feels a lot better. What an idiot. I can't believe that I couldn't see that, you know. It was, the tyre wasn't flat, so when my, completely flat, so when my fat ass is not on the bike, it, um, it was, uh, it, it looked like it had air in it, so, um, anyway, I put some air in, and, um, we'll just have to see how, how long that lasts. 35 k's to go, so I'm hoping it gets me into Kananara, um, where I can check it out more thoroughly, but, um, thank God for the, Slime pumps, um, tell you what. Uh, well, four days in Kananara, um, waiting for workshops to open, etc. Because I'm too lazy to do a job like a rear wheel tire change um, myself, and um, especially in this heat. So, um, anyway, I had it in at the local um, Honda repair shop. And, um, and I've got a heavy duty tube put in there so hopefully my tyre pressure issues are a thing of the past. Then um, I had discovered that the rattling I was hearing all this time was coming from a loose chain that, that was hitting my swing arm. It was that loose. And, um, and when I took it to the dealership here, um, Mick said to me, look, he said that chain looks a bit um, sus because um, let's put an o-ring chain on it and I've had that done and um, so there's a brand new chain on there $345 later tire and chain done with a heavy duty tube but 
Um, I think for the peace of mind that this is going to give me, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and I rode it out of the workshop and it's a different bike. There's absolutely no rattling, no noise. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy and confident to press on tomorrow uh, to Halls Creek. Um, and obviously the time here in Kananara has not been wasted. I've been doing all the editing of this video so that I can post it up tonight for you, all you good people to, to watch and uh, be astounded by. I'm going to walk around this building while I do this. Um, so I'm at um, Port Headland, or technically this is South Headland, which is a, a sort of a light industrial dormitory uh, town adjacent to Port Headland. And I'm, I'm here because well, I'm way ahead of schedule already because yesterday I got my bike loaded onto a trailer of uh, some good Samaritans uh, who stopped by to help me because my clutch gave in yesterday, just five kilometers out from Sandfire Roadhouse. And um, uh, yeah, catastrophic thing. It wasn't just that it's slipping or something like that and I can change the clutch plates. No, this was, uh, it's more serious than that. Something's um, definitely broken in there. So, um, so I was stranded on the side of the road, but not for long because this couple who had seen me at the, the roadhouse um, thought they would check up on me since I'd stopped so quick, so soon after the roadhouse. Yeah, they, they stopped by and said, am I okay? And I said, no, look, this is, looks like a terminal kind of scenario to me. Um, you know, I could go back to Sand, Sandfire and get a room there because they had rooms. Um, and they said, no, why don't we take you to Port Headland? We can take you to Port Headland. I thought, oh, okay. Um, That, that'll be incredible. So they had a camper trailer attached to a, um, a Land Cruiser uh, wagon. And, um, and we, with the help of the police, um, we loaded the, the, the postie onto the, the trailer. And um, the guy that stopped, his name is Gav, coincidentally, um, and uh, we kind of chuckled about that because there's not many Gavins around. His wife, his lovely wife's name is Fiona. And um, anyway, uh, the police stopped and, and put their lights on to just protect us from getting slammed into on this, on this road. And one of the, the one policeman was a brute of a man, like just um, about six foot seven, just a monster. Not that but just big so we picked him we said come on give us a hand to to load this bike and um, which he did and his name happened to be Gav as well go figure three Gavs loading this bike it was just incredible anyway we got the bike loaded and we we drove for I think it was about three hours or maybe three and a half hours I'm not sure <coughs> to um, Port Headland um, and he said to me he said oh, I'll get Nick to look at it Nick's my next door neighbor um, and uh, and he's a motorbike mechanic as it turns out and he happens to be the only motorbike mechanic in town at this point in time so he said even if you found would you search and find the local mo motorbike shop Nick would be the one working on it so I'll give him a call and and when we get into Port Headland he can come next door and have a look at this and I said but it's a Sunday plus um, from what I could gather Nick had been when I heard Fiona speaking on the phone to his wife Nick was recovering from a bout of flu so <laughs> but no problem to these people no he can do it you see they say on his behalf um, we'll just make him do it. 
<coughs> so eventually we get into Port Headland uh, to Gavin Fiona's place and uh, and Nick comes over well uh, Gav goes and fetches Nick and comes over and we discuss this and we get the bike off the trailer and then Nick's out with his tools and this is like um, what uh, I don't know maybe 5.30 in the evening or something like that I couldn't guess really but, but later in the afternoon and he's on the tools and he's ripping the side cover off my my clutch and and having a look in there and um, this is incredible these people I, I mean you know just the the goodwill and the willingness to help out is just amazing anyway um, so Nick um, eventually we we kind of agree that he's got to get he, he needs some special tools he needs an impact uh, driver to get at the clutch and they he doesn't have one at home so it's got to go into the workshop and he's going to negotiate with his workshop manager today that um, this job gets prioritized and um, and uh, because he might need to order some parts from Perth so um, so we load the the bike onto his ute now so he can get it into the workshop today I mean these people are just amazing and then um, uh, Fiona, Gav and I went out to the pub uh, and had a had a dinner um, so yeah just wonderful wonderful people here as well so thank you Gav, Fiona and Nick for all of that it, it is just phenomenal now I'm going to go into Macca's and have some caffeine Cheerio. Okay, so that was just an RBT check and I'm all for those. Good on them for doing that. Um, you know, there's just enough carnage on roads without people drinking and driving, so I'm up for that. Never complain about an RBT. Um, so, right. So I'm on my way out of Port Headland uh, or South Headland as it actually is this is the southern kind of industrial dormitory town attached to the port yesterday um, at about midday so you know probably like 24 hours after this event I got a call from the workshop here in, in South Headland saying I can come and pick my bike up and I um, haven't found anything there was nothing broken nothing bent um, nothing overly worn um, so there was nothing to explain what happened other than some what he referred to as quite a bit of sludge and some fibers in the clutch basket itself which he thinks might have just clogged things up and jammed things a bit which, yeah, I don't know. The jury's out on that. So, however, there was no other explanation um, for this because nothing was broken, nothing was bent, nothing was worn. So, he put the clutch back together again, um, filled it with fresh oil, so filled it with oil, and um, and you know it. Well, he said before he, you know, he did all of that, he turned the clutch in his hand and all that, and it seemed to be free. So, you know, he, he then completed the job, filled it with oil, uh, took it for a test drive. He says, look, it's going okay. Um, you know, there doesn't seem to be anything. It, it changed gears well. It did everything it was supposed to do. So there you go. Oh, God, I'm riding past the sewage farm. Oh, Jesus. Okay, um, 
that's it. So um, at midday, I, I was called to pick the bike up. You know, just 12 hours after, 24 hours after this all happened. Just incredible. Um, you know, I'm I'm so appreciative of everyone that's been involved in this. Um, I cannot. The gears are working fine. It's a bit jumpy when I change up, but that might just be the way he's adjusted the clutch. So. I've got to back right off on the throttle to get a reasonably smooth gear, gear change, but you know, um, there's no noises, there's, well there was no noises prior to this happening, it was very very sudden kind of catastrophic failure, and so, you know, I can't say I'm overly confident, it wasn't overly confident, because <laughs> You know, I can understand that. He couldn't find anything wrong other than this sludge that he described and uh, fiber. Um, so as a, as a motor mechanic, you want to know what caused the problem. And, um, you know, and, and he felt that he's probably got it, but it's not all that convincing a story. So, yeah, that leaves me a little... Uh, you know, a little unsure and uh, my confidence needs to rebuild in this little bike getting me all the way around. What they said to me is I need to, uh, they suggested I get a complete clutch done, whole clutch rebuild um, as soon as I can. Now, you know, <laughs> I'm riding around Australia for God's sake. Um, you know, if I did that, let's say in Perth, um, you know, I went onto the Lambda website, I'll try and call them today anyway, um, to get one shipped to Perth, then I've got to get it scheduled into a workshop for them to do it, um, and, uh, you know, that, that might just be more complicated uh, than just winging it so I'll see how it goes today in the next couple of days and uh, you know hopefully I'll make it to um, Karatha where I'm headed today um, I've only got about let's have a look 225 kilometers so I haven't given myself a big day at all for this very reason and also um, the distances between places when I head south from here, Karatha onward is massive and um, you kind of My bike just gave up, it literally gave up at an intersection and I uh, got a hold of Mark here and Mark is uh, very kindly loaded the bike up, brought it into his workshop and we've discovered that it's kind of a catastrophic failure. We've got um, a, valves, a valve issue on the exhaust valve, we've got um, a piston that's piston broke as they say in the classics. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's knackered. Um, and uh, the barrel scored so the whole motor is basically unserviceable um, like, yeah. so we're trying to figure out what to do we're either going to replace this motor or um, repair it um, whichever is the quickest and the least expensive so that's where we stand right now. So it's up on the stand. Um, thank you, Mark, for all your your efforts, and I'll all certainly right. I'll certainly give a, a shout out to you on the on the vlog and and your good service. So thanks for that. I've been I've been bloody lucky. I've got to tell you. Man, um, to get this far after what you explained, yeah, um, was pleasantly surprised. This shows how strong these motors actually are. They are. They <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that's that's where we are. So I will keep an update of where things stand at this point.
Recording. Well, I'm at the very intersection. In fact, right across there, coming uh, this traffic now, going through the, the, the intersection, is where my postie broke down um, on Wednesday last week. And, um, well, and, uh, yeah, Tuesday this week, so it's been a full week, and um, my postie is back in action. Um, complete motor rebuild, not without its bits of drama here and there, um, but Mike uh, at um, Dream Adventure Motor did a fantastic job. Um, really switched on mechanic and um, uh, a, a really nice bloke to boot. So fantastic, Mark. Thank you so much, mate. Um, and uh, very expensive process, of course, uh, with um, having to get all the the rebuild component shipped over from Brisbane plus Mark's labour and um, look you know basically cost me more I think in total than the post he originally cost me <laughs> so, so I've paid for this bike twice but here's my rationale and I'm going to stick with this I started something that I need to finish um, and so did this little postie so um, I'm not going to I wasn't about to just give up on this and you know it's it's one of those things when you feel this committed and something goes wrong you kind of you kind of in you know uh, you're all in and um, and I was all in, so, yeah, I've got to, I've got to just grin and bear it. So I'm, I should be all good to finish this ride through to Sydney now without any more bloody drama. Um, the only drama that could potentially arise is with this plastic tank. Um, so where it was mounted onto the frame, um, it's got some metal bracket um, kind of loop things and, um, and they were embedded in the plastic of the tank, obviously. But what's happened with the, the stress that was on those, the way it was mounted onto the frame, it's created a tiny little crack along where this bracket is in the tank on the um, I think it's on the left hand side and um, and the, when Mark tried to refit the tank he spotted a, a leak coming out of this crack not a you know it wasn't peeing out but there was a leak so he alerted me to this so we looked at how we should do this and we've used, put some epoxy there, some fuel uh, resistant epoxy and, uh, and, and sorted that out. But we don't want to put the same uh, torque stress onto that bracket by mounting it the, the way it was because it's likely just to create the same problem. So the tank has got some padding, some, I went and bought some some nice uh, sort of thick sponge uh, uh, yeah, sp sponge padding stuff from Bunnings and we cut that and we've packed it underneath the, between the tank and the down tube on this bike and um, and uh, then gaffer taped the tank onto the bike <laughs> and um, I did um, in order to stay with the Honda theme I did buy red gaffer tape but there's many many loops of gaffer tape going around this tank um, and uh, you know along the way I might have to add some more um,
Well, um, I stopped uh, here at the Nullarbor Roadhouse and got off my bike and just noticed these, the shiny inside part of my chain and how my rear sprocket, you know, I'll just try and get this camera in there, has completely worn away on that right hand side. So the chain has been pulling skew in the sprocket. The wheel would have been mounted slightly skew to have caused this. Um, probably when, when Mark, well, it would have been when Mark changed my tire. Um, and uh, yeah, look, this is really dicey. So um, the chain's holding together. I've, I've straightened it in the, on the axle as much as I've been able to so that it runs more on on this left side than on that right side but um, it's wearing that chain so badly and the sprocket is knackered so I've ordered um, a new chain and sprocket set from Lambda in Brisbane and um, asked Mike to to express mail it down to me so that I can replace this because it's it's one it's dangerous because that chain could go um, so I'm going to ride it through to Seduna and that's going to be it and then I'll replace it there but of course you can't get these things just over the counter so yeah it's got to be shipped in and then I'll have to uh, yeah replace all of this stuff the joys of well I hope it's I hope this is obvious as to what's happened to the inside of this old sprocket compared to the new one. If you look from the top you can see how it's worn on what is the left hand side facing the camera um, and uh, yeah and these are shark's tooth sprocket um, boy I don't know what they used to tighten the sprocket uh, bolts on this on this old sprocket but have I struggled to, to remove it I cannot believe how tight these bolts were it's it's insane how tight they were um, and uh, yeah it's, it, there's no need for it I'm pretty sure of that because you know they they, they they're not going to come that loose and there's not that much torque on, on this little motor. Anyhow, these guys did a job. Right, so I've cable tied the sprocket side of the hub onto the spokes and I've got the brake side also cable tied onto the spokes. So that gives me a third pair of hands which um, I think it's going to make this job a whole lot easier. So I might put this on um, time lapse and see if I can focus it on this and get this job done. All right, job done. Um, so I have a new chain and sprocket, uh, I had to take one link out of that chain uh, just to get it so that I can tension it properly and um, yeah so let's hope this is the last of the, the challenges along the way, I've had enough now, uh, challenges not of the ride so hopefully, look i probably got to have the tire, the rear tire looks like it might need to be swapped out maybe with a front tire at some point and that's not a job that I'm going to do I'm going to give it to someone else to do but um, yeah I think that's probably the only other thing I need to do before I uh, get back to Sydney so there you go folks, all done